As Paul weighs in, attempting to settle the dispute, it has only been about 20 years since Jesus had been killed. Jesus' first followers and those who subsequently joined them were left with the challenge of being community without Jesus there leading them forward in any visible or tangible way. This new group of people of faith had to figure out how to structure this new entity, how to live together in community. They had to figure out, in simple, how to be church. The task at hand was perhaps more important than they realized. They were really caught up in arguing over issues where disagreement prevailed, strong feelings and opinions were expressed all around, harsh words with a standard operating procedure, and confusion reigned. They may not have been aware of the bigger picture as the debate raged on. As Paul struggles to guide the church through this heated dispute, working to put Jesus' way into action, he writes those liberating words of the Bible, the central core, the entire message of the living Christ, the heart of the gospel. For Christians, those trying to follow Jesus, there is no difference between Jew or Gentile, slave or the free person, male or female. In other words, there is no difference because of race or ethnicity, social status or gender identity. Everyone, absolutely everyone, is equally valuable and equally valued, for we are one in Christ. Sounds good, doesn't it? One in Christ. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? A unity made possible by the living Christ. A community of believers living in harmony and love. But what in the world does one in Christ really mean? Last week, you recall, I challenged the children to ask questions, to seek meaning, to ask more and more and more questions. And maybe they will come to us with questions. And maybe their questions will be what save, saves us, causing us to re-examine the words that we so easily say. Words that may have long since lost any real meaning. Words that really don't guide us anymore. Words we say but don't really think about. What will we say if the children come to us asking, what does it mean to be one in Christ? When did you last think about that? I mean, really think about it. Honestly consider what one in Christ means and how it should guide our work and life together. Now often, when we say we are one in Christ, I think we really mean that we're all pretty much alike. We basically believe the same things. We understand God in pretty much the same ways. We can count on our words about Jesus, about God, to put us on common ground, because we all really mean the same thing by those words. After all, isn't that what community is? A group of people who have come together, committed to common purposes, headed in the same direction, joined together with some sense of community and commonality and purpose. You know, actually, when we talk about being one in Christ, I often think what we really mean is not only that everyone in the group is pretty much alive, but everyone's basically like me, thinking, Believing, valuing, living like I do. Because then you see it's easy for me to make assumptions about who you are. Never taking the time or the energy to find out what you really think, what you really believe, what you really value, or how you live your life as a follower of the Jesus way. The problem, of course, comes when we discover that we are not alive. We have different ideas. We have different views. We, we want different things. We have different beliefs. We live our faith in a variety of ways. We don't even mean the same thing by the very same words that we use. Is it even possible to be community, true, real, genuine community, in the midst of so much difference? According to Paul, not only is it possible to have community in the midst of difference and diversity. But according to Paul, diversity is absolutely essential to genuine community. Let me say it a different way. 
If we cannot welcome in real diversity, if we do not encourage the real diversity among us, if we do not let diversity enrich our lives, we don't have community in any real sense of the word. Diversity lived out fully in genuine community is hard. It requires a lot of work. Direct communication is a must. Intentional commitment to being community is essential. Finding real unity, true oneness in Christ in the midst of diversity is a lot of work. It takes effort. In the New Testament commentary, true to our native land, Brad Braxton writes, genuine unity will require deliberate, consistent, and ruggedly honest dialogue and fellowship among distinct groups. Deliberate, consistent, ruggedly honest dialogue and fellowship. So how do we talk together? How do we have fellowship together? How do we live together? How do we find unity as we seek to follow the Jesus way? I think we begin by working to build and to maintain harmonious relationships of mutuality with respect for differences. And then we listen to and take part the words of the author of the book of James, to be peaceable, gentle with one another, kind and considerate, Willing to yield, living in humility, full of compassion. Showing no partiality, no hypocrisy. Always seeking wisdom and truth in all things. And all the time knowing that how we live is indeed and in fact our true religion. It is the actual curriculum that we teach our children, regardless of anything we may say in their church school classes or how glossy and pretty the curriculum may be. It is our real witness to the world beyond our wall.